So you may have noticed, um, let me get a new page, that the definition of dot product looks a lot like the definition of matrix multiplication. It's a sum of things, each of which is a product of two things. And in fact, we can really write down two matrices whose product is this. It's uh, V1 up to Vn as a row vector and W1 up to Wn as a column vector in that order. Okay, multiply this out, we get V1, W1, V2, W2 to Vn, Wn all summed together. And okay, technically this gives us a one by one matrix, but really we can think of that as just being a number. Because it's only got one entry. So what did we do here? We took our vector V, which was originally a column vector, and we turned it on its side to get a row vector. So this operation has a name. This is called transposition. So this is the transpose of V. And you write that as V superscript capital T. Some people use small t um, or other things. I'm, I'm going to use V upper capital T. So this is the transpose of V. So more generally, given um, an M by N matrix A um, with entries A, I, J, um, we get an N by M matrix so the number of columns, the number of rows are switched. This is called A transpose or AT, uh, whose IJth entry is AJI. In other words, A transpose i j equals a j i for example if we start with one two three four the two by two matrix one two three four and we transpose it we're going to get the matrix one three two four All right we're flipping the matrix across the diagonal All right so there's this diagonal line and we're uh, so reflecting in that line to get this one. Uh, get, it looks a bit more complicated if you have something that's not a square matrix. Um, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six transpose. That's a two by three matrix. So we're going to end up with a three by two matrix, so three rows and two columns. And columns, sorry, the rows of this matrix will be the columns of this matrix. So 1, 4, 2, 5, 3, 6. Okay, so that's how you get this, this matrix. You, you read down the columns and you write that out as rows. So the rows of a transpose are the transposes of the columns. of A. Okay, and now you can really see why this matrix index notation is fantastic. Because this formula, very, very simple. And to write a sentence that says the same thing, I mean, it's possible. I've done it here, but it's kind of a bit icky. So in other words, dot product v.w 
is a special case of matrix multiplication, it's V transpose times W. Okay, uh, so we're going to use this observation to prove this theorem, which you may have forgotten about by now. This is another main point of this uh, session, is to prove this theorem, that V dot W is length of V times length of W times cos theta. So in order to prove this theorem, um, we are going to start with a lemma. So the lemma tells us what happens if we multiply A and B matrices and then we take the transpose. And it's very nice. The answer is you take the transpose of B and the transpose of A and you multiply them together in the opposite order. So AB all transposed is B transpose times A transpose. And this switch of order really matters because remember matrix multiplication is not commutative. So proof of this again we're going to use index notation. So AB transpose IJ is by this formula up here it's um, a b j i just switching the order of the indices and remember there's a formula for a b for the i for the j i entry of a b it's the sum over k of a j k b k i this we wrote a couple of lectures ago now, um, what I can do is I can write out this side as well. So B transpose A transpose is, uh, sorry, I, IJ, again, the IJ entry of this is sum over K, B transpose I, K, A transpose K, J. Right, by definition of matrix multiplication and now using again this formula for transposes this is sum over k of b k i a j k just again switching the order of these two and getting rid of the t and switching the k and the j and getting rid of the transpose and now just compare these two formulas they're the same with the exception that the b and the a are in the opposite order but I claim that no longer matters. So that mattered here in, in the statement of the lemma because the objects who are multiplying were matrices and matrices don't commute. But at this point, once we've passed index notation, the numbers the, the objects who are multiplying together are numbers, right? A, J, K is a number. It's the J, K entry of A. So numbers commute with each other. So these are equal. And this is, again, one of the reasons that index notation is so good is because you convert everything into numbers, like matrix entries, which don't have any of the problems about commutivity or lack of commutivity, commutativity, <laughs> that matrices have. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to use this observation, this lemma, um, to come back and prove this theorem.